everyone. We have another sketch box to open today. That's a lovely eye uh, done by Jen Doyle on the box there. I wonder if that was done with the charcoal box. Okay, putting that aside. We have... Oh, what's this? Oh, that's my protective cover for my brush. Let's get rid of the tissue paper there. Here's a lovely sticker. Hmm. Oh, look, it's even got the date on it. April 2023. That's kind of cool. Yes. So, and wow, this is super bright and colorful. This artworks by Kara Ann Aldridge. Kara, maybe? Another Cupixel thing, setting that aside. And then we have the menu. Looks like this is what I was looking for. Okay, here's the menu. And the this month's prompt is Blossom. Very spring fitting. So we have some interesting looking markers. A pencil and a paintbrush and a pad of paper, a Pantone art pad, four by six inches. It's 10 sheets, 82 pounds. The paper in this pad is specially formulated for the Pantone inks included in this month's box. It's brilliant white paper allows for optimal color. So I pulled a sheet off to do some swatching. So Pantone is that color company. I don't know anything about it, but they always have like the color of the year. Love this color. What is this color? 327. Does it have a name? I don't see a name. So it says marker ink. So maybe this is to refill these, but it's a different color. Hmm. Okay. And then we have a lovely pencil, Faber-Castell grip pencil. I kind of like the dots on this. I mean, the fact that it's a pencil is not very exciting to me. And this says two and a half equals HB. I don't know what that means, but I guess it's an HB pencil, which is good for sketching. Um, retail price, $125. Little lovely eraser. Let's see how this one looks. Faber. Castell. And it's got kind of a triangular shape. I kind of like that. It's nice and easy to hold. So, but it is a pencil, so it's not super exciting. I do not need another pencil, but you know what? This one is better than some. So, let's get over there. And let's see how well it erases. I'm going to try to do some light marks and then my typical... <laughs> gouging marks and the eraser is crummy but it works and you know it's not getting rid of all of my even my light marks um could be the paper could be the pencil i want to see if there's a difference with my little white eraser slightly better Ugh, can't even read this it's a creta color um, I also have an electric eraser right here. Really testing it out. That does a better job, but I mean, hey, it's electric, so whatever. I don't know that this is in a pinch. It's attached. It has an eraser attached, so that's something. But uh, I don't know if that eraser's that great. Okay, moving on here. Let's see. We have the sketch. Box exclusive launch partner with Royal Talons Pantone marker 114, 218, 304, and 2572. So that's cool. We're the first to get to try this. Um, it's a marker. I don't know. I'm not super excited about marker. Uh, let me see these colors. Let's see. Start with 218. Looks like it's dual ended and the slanty end with the little notch here. Whoa, is a chisel. Okay. I wonder if that notch is supposed to keep it from rolling. I think it sort of helps. Okay. Let's just go in and do some swatch. This is a very magenta color, I would say. Paper's interesting. Um, what is this paper? It says it's for markers, but it is kind of, I don't know, it 
feels like a mixed media paper. It's soaking up some of the color, so Ooh, I like that shape. Um, we'll just have to see what we can do with this, huh? And while we're still here, a little bit of ghosting. I didn't even put that much on there, but there's a little bit of ghosting already. Ooh, I need some water. This, well, we'll talk about the brush real quick here. A Princeton round brush, very versatile. I like the Princeton company. It's it's pretty uh, sound quality. Size four, it's a pretty good size. Nice and small, but not too, too small. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. I did give it plenty of time. So, boy, it's already soaked into the paper there. I guess maybe if I try to have some nice feathering there, and that is... So if you're going to want to spread it around, boy, I think you're going to have to do it before putting on the paper. There, let's see. I'll put some in there. It's pretty permanent right away on the paper. Ooh, I like that. Okay. So... They're having the brushes nice because then, you know, you can do some lighter effects. Let's, I've lost, oh, I didn't lose a marker. I just set it on the other side. Let's go ahead and see these other colors. Uh, 2572 looks to be a little bit of a purple. Oh, it's very much a purple. Am I humming now? Oh boy. All right, and then we have 114, lovely bright yellow. Can almost make uh, petal shapes, but that's a really awkward angle. Oh look, I almost made a flower. Um, might have to work on my how I hold it though. Um, I do want to see. Oh, look at that. Uh, I'm gonna do like a little uh, swatch chart, I think, um, on the bottom. Three, zero, four, to see what other colors we can do. This is very bright. I don't know, it might be, it's a little out of my comfort zone, the brightness level of these colors, but let's see what we can do with it, huh? So that's the blue, which is 304. And then we have this little number, which is the refill ink. So it says 30 milliliters pigment based ink. Doesn't have any like light fast information, does it? So I wonder which pigments are in there and how long they last. Like. Well, I guess we don't get to know that. I am dropping a drop there. Then I'm going to close this up. My phone keeps making noise over here. I thought I silenced it. Oh my goodness. Do you ever do that? Like, you think you silence your phone, but really, it's been sitting on silent all day, and so all you did was turn it on? I'm like, why is it making all this noise? Well, because I just turned it on. And it's been quiet all morning because I had it on silent. I don't even, it's a tiny switch too. I mean, it seems like it should be hard to accidentally do it, but I'm always accidentally silencing my phone. And then if I don't really notice, I might accidentally turn it on when I want it to be silent. Maybe I'm the only one that has that problem. So I like the responsiveness of the brush. You can get some really fine details and you know you can do a swath of color mm, there's an interesting dry brush effect there um, this is my favorite color of course this is my favorite color officially I mean anything in the teal turquoise range um, but of the colors yeah I like this one um, now let's go ahead and do a full-on swatch shirt. I think I'm going to need another sheet for that. All right, here is my substandard swatch chart. I mean, not not that great. And I was kind of doing it fast, but, uh, and I messed up there. <laughs> Oops. So, 
interestingly, okay, this one seems to be a little overpowering, at least in how I was laying it down. Plus, I really, really wetted this paper. Mm. So I think that it might be easier to mix the colors in a ceramic dish, but we'll see. You get a, a sort of a brownish one there with the purple and the yellow, but where's the other purple? Purple and, but I didn't get the same kind of brown there, but a nice red, reddish orange there. Um, and a nice, a different purple. There's sort of some green. Um, my colors aren't that great. So we'll see how I can do with this. Um, but yeah, this is very bright. Um, interested to see what I can do with it. I don't know what I think about this paper. Um, I'm gonna have to try it some more. I'm not sure if I'm using it to its strength, and so that's a better just play with it and figure it out. So I think I'm going to put some artwork on the end here. All right, final thoughts here. Um, so these colors, they're very bright. Um, so it wasn't really my color palette. Uh, the markers um, seemed a little bit expensive. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. It was over $8 a marker, plus the ink bottle was 12 something. That seemed a lot. I don't know if it's because it's Pantone name, but, and I was doing kind of a watercolor method. This maybe is not the way to use these. I don't know. We got a paintbrush though. I love the paintbrush. Um, so I wanted to do kind of watercolor. Well, at least a wet application. And I did not like how it interacted with the paper. It said the paper was for the markers. Eh, underwhelmed. So the entire box for me was a little bit of a mess. That's my honest opinion there. Um, though I do want to try these supplies on watercolor paper and see if I like them better. Um, I was inspired to do ducklings by a really cute, cute video of ducklings climbing in to nap with a kitty cat. And so that is why I found a a reference photo on Pixabay, and oh, these guys are so cute. So I do like how my sketch turned out. I like the image. I just didn't like how it went down on the paper. Um, and granted, it could definitely be user error. I'm really interested to see what other artists do with these supplies, um, because my style is a little closer to realism, and so it's hard for me to just switch it up. Um, so maybe there would have been a better way to use these. I, I definitely think that I wasn't really doing the what they needed here for these supplies to look best. So I'm pretty sure somebody else is going to do something better with it. But I do like my little ducklings. And yeah, this is not watercolor paper, but I was using it like it was. So I don't know. I, I, I'm going to try some more and see what happens. But let me know what you think in the comments. And maybe you have more info about these supplies than I do. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, the other thing, we didn't have like a black. I couldn't really mix anything dark. So I just went in with the graphite for like the eyes and the darker spots. Um, and I'm trying to add a little bit of fluff here with the pencil now. But yeah, I will show you um, here in a moment how up close, how it looks. And, you know, I do like my little ducklings, but these were not my favorite supplies that we've had in the boxes. So thanks again for watching and have a wonderful creative day as always.